it's time for some fireworks. Why you might ask? Because 8 months after INAF 5.1 was released, it's time for INAF 6. It's already live for a few days and this video is a short summary of the most important features that were introduced in the INAF 6 Horizon Hawk. Before we start, I would like to thank all the people that made the INAF 6 possible. It's for you all the developers that decided that coding INAF in the evening is the best thing you can do right now. Because well, yeah, developers, we are special. Overall, INAF 6 turned out to be a quite a bigish release. It consists of 241 merge requests. We released support for 11 new boards, dropped 11 legacy sensors and protocols, and gained 15 new contributors. One more time, thank you very much. It would not be possible without you. Probably the biggest change in INAF 6 is something that it's no longer there. Guess what it is? Yup. It is the Horizon Drift. INAF 6 introduced the new Attitude and Heading Reference System, which Da -dum -da -dum, solve the problem of the horizon drift. Don't get me wrong, it still might drift in some cases, but even without absolutely any tuning and changes, it behaves much better during the flight. This is especially visible for all the fixed wing airplanes. When previously it was usually, you know, the tilted to one of the sides, now it should stay locked into the actual horizon and gives you a super Super nice improvement in the flight performance. Of course, not in acro or manual modes, but every mode that is using the artificial horizon for anything will fly much better. And of course, it affects both the fixed wing and the multi-rotor platform. And the best thing is that you do not have to do anything to make that work. Everything is set up by default. The only thing that you have to do is to flash INAV with the option of full chip erase, apply the defaults in the configurator with the defaults dialog and you are done. New, improved and not drifting artificial horizon should be already there. The next extremely cool feature is the return to home trackback. When enabled, INAF will no longer fly your airplane drone or rover with the straight line to the point when you started. No, 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 no. That would be too simple. Now there is an option for your INAF craft to recreate the route that took your craft to the place where you enabled to return to home or fail saved. Why this is important? Because now your INAF craft can avoid the obstacles that might be between itself when the return to home or fail save started and the place where it wants to go. You fly a multi rotor drone in the mountains. You made a mistake and instead of flying somewhere when you have the link coverage, you just turn out behind the mountain. In the normal scenario, the drone would just like to get some altitude and go in a straight line to the place where it started. But if there is a mountain between this point and the point where it wants to go, well, obviously it would crash. With the return to home trackback, the rover would not take the shortest way, but the route that it took it there. Just reversed its tracks and went home. If you ask me, pretty, pretty nice. When you hear about the next change, you might start asking questions, but really, you shouldn't. The change we are talking about is that, well, we removed the extra arming safety of option. You might ask, does it mean that right now you won't be able to arm without the GPS fix? Absolutely not. We have only removed the option that allows to permanently disable this check, mainly because it's not really safe. So how can you arm your INAF airplane or drone without the GPS fix? With the bypass option. If you set the extra arming safety to allow bypass and then before arming move the yaw stick 
to the right, you will be able to arm without the GPS fix, no problem. This video was created thanks to my Patreons and YouTube channel members. To be honest, you're the main reason this channel keeps going. If you're not one of them, then please consider becoming one for as little as two bucks a month. And yes, you will get some special benefits by doing so. There are quite a few. Next. Hardware in the loop. Do you know that right now, if you own the X-Plane 11 flight simulator, you can fly with your iNav on the X-Plane 11 simulator? You just have to buy the X-Plane 11, install some additional software, connect your iNav flight controller with your own settings to your PC, and X-Plane 11 can use iNav to simulate how your airplane would fly. You can train, you can test new settings without going to the flying field because everything, almost everything, can be tested with the simulator. Next is the MSP DisplayPort and in general INAV compatibility with the HD0, Avatar Walk Snail, DJI WTF OS and the latest DJI O3 Air units. Right now, if you want to use the MSP DisplayPort OSD with any of those platforms, you do have to select on the serial port that you want to use the MSP DisplayPort on the serial port, connect your hardware to the serial port and finally in the OSD tab select the type of the device you connected. iNav will be able to use different settings for the HD0, different for the Cadix Walk Snail, different for the WTF OS and different for the DJI O3 MSP display port which is right now called the Betaflight compatibility. And yes, iNav uses the HD OSD layout with the HD0, Walk Snail and WTF OS. The next small but kinda important update is for the multirotor pilots. Right now, by default, INAV will disarm your multirotor after landing. This option is present in INAV for years, but now for the first time we decided that everyone should use it by default. INAF lands, detects the bump, disarms and you are golden. There was also a quite important upgrade to the INAF gyro filtering framework. It includes the new option on the matrix gyro filter. Right now the matrix gyro filter can work both in the 2D and the 3D mode. The 2D mode is basically the same behavior as we had before. On the 3D option the matrix filter will apply additional filters trying to fight with the vibrations that went through the first layer of the matrix filter. In case of Minecrafts, the 3D matrix filter was able to lower the temperature on the ESCs by approximately 10 degrees Celsius and allow me to push the D gains on the PID controller much, much, much higher for much better flight performance. It also uses less energy, sounds better and in general it's a great option to enable if you are flying everything bigger than the 5-inch propeller multirotors. And finally, the new RC filtering and interpolation. Right now, INAF uses the same approach for filtering of the RC signal as Betaflight does. You no longer have to provide a static cutoff frequency for the RC filter. Right now, you only provide a filtering factor. The bigger the factor, the more filtering will happen. The lower the factor, the less filtering will be applied. And everything will be automatically scaled with the reference frequency of your radio signal. 100 Hz, 200 Hz, 500 Hz doesn't really matter and it even works with the radio links that dynamically change the refresh rate frequency. Like for example Crossfire. Here's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying! I think it's time for INAF7.